Lush, and I'm here in the Hub Culture Pavilion in Davos at the World Economic Forum. Really pleased to be joined by Dr. Eric David, Chief Strategy Officer at Organovo. Mm -hmm. You 3D print human tissue. That's right. Let's talk about what you do, first of all, in the therapeutic realm. What are some of the advances that you've made? So right now we're still in preclinical trials on all of our therapeutic tissues. And mm -hmm. the goal, of course, is to be able to replace or augment organ function. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you know, there's worldwide, there's a, a huge shortage of organs for transplant. Mm -hmm. And there are many diseases that can only be cured by replacing the actual functionality mm -hmm. of the organ. So we're in preclinical trials across um, a few different tissues. So mm -hmm. very early stage. Uh, but the goal is um, to to try to cure diseases where there's a true unmet need that can mm -hmm. only be cured by replacement organs. And so we work across a number of different tissues right now. We've not really publicly disclosed what those are. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, but, you know, suffice it to say, things like liver, things like mm -hmm. lung, a, a lot of tissues that we work on on a regular basis are all candidates for, uh, for possible therapeutic intervention. Will you be able to, do you print it outside the human body or would, you, would it be as part of a surgical process? We would print it outside of the body mm -hmm. and then implant it. Mm -hmm. And so one of the key questions that always com comes up in that mm -hmm. realm is, would you print it from someone else's tissues mm -hmm. or would you print it from the patient's own tissue? Mm -hmm. um, and when you talk to regulators um, or pharmaceutical companies about this, right now there's actually a bias to print it from someone else's tissue mm -hmm. because you can, you can that, that way have it ready. It can be a little right. bit more off the shelf, as, as uh -huh. off the shelf as a organ can, can be. be. Um, whereas if you have to first meet the patient, mm -hmm. not only does it take much longer to make the tissue, but you also have the problem that every every organ that you make is different. There's right. no there's no standardization. Right. And so that's something that regulators are a little bit wary of. Tell me about the work that you're doing on the research side as well. So we also want, there's a tremendous problem in our industry, which is um, for, for uh, drugs that pharmaceutical companies develop, you know, pills or mm -hmm. biologic compounds, uh, they have a big problem, which is before they test them in humans, before they go into clinical trials, mm -hmm. um, they have to show the regulators that they've done some good research. Right. And usually this means putting a drug into an animal, mm -hmm. which is great because it's a fully integrated organism, but it's profoundly not a human being. Right. Um, or they can test it on human cells, basically in a Petri dish. Mm -hmm. And once you take the cells and put them in a Petri dish, they no longer really behave like cells in our bodies. Right. So we're able to create three-dimensional, fully functional human tissue that replicates the in vivo tissue. Mm -hmm. And it gives pharmaceutical companies a much more representative, much more clinically predictive tool to trust to test drugs on basically as close as one can get to testing a drug on a human being before actually putting it into a human mm -hmm. being so what we're talking about is a sort of augmented human it's a sort of human 2.0 it's the stuff of, of science fiction it is times, it is right? indeed yeah so when do you think we'll get to a point where this is normal it's a great question i mean i would say you know we hope to be in the clinic with uh w with some tissue-based intervention uh, within a three to five year time frame, you know, mm -hmm. in clinical trials. Um, but that will be a smaller dimension tissue, right? The, this, the technology is just not there yet to build a full organ. Mm -hmm. the, the, the catch with building a full organ is you need to build all of the supplies of vessels and mm -hmm. nerves that normally support that organ. Mm -hmm. And getting them to all integrate properly mm -hmm. is, is not straightforward. So, look, I think it'll be, you know, I think it'll be a decade to 15 years or so before you really start to see significant size organs. Um, but the good news is, in the meantime, there's a lot we can do with tissue patches. You mm -hmm. think of a cardiac muscle patch mm -hmm. or a liver tissue patch. Like a Band-Aid. Exactly, yep, yeah. Or something living, that, breathing Band-Aid. Exactly. Or something that can bridge a patient so, mm -hmm. you know, another three or four years before they need a transplant. Mm -hmm or replace a vessel that can't otherwise be replaced. So there's a lot of great work to be done along the way before we get to full size organs. Thank you so much for stopping by the Hub Culture Pavilion. My pleasure, thanks for Here having me. Here in Davos, me. I'm Edie Lush.